everyone, can you hear me okay and see me? Okay, fabulous. And well done for getting here early. I was curious whether people would read it or not. I'm sure some people will get here late, but that's okay. Um, okay, so who's ready for some serious going back to school economic education? <laughs> A few people. Yeah, well, religion say money is the root of all evil, but when you read what Jesus said, he said the love of money is the root of all evil. And at the end of the day, good luck living in a Western society with no money. So I regard this as a very important topic myself for if we're going to be winning our freedoms and, you know, making a difference in society. So without any further ado, let me just, just let's get started. Okay, so as before, I'm not a registered lawyer or financial advisor, although I'm a qualified accountant and I am working with a, a licensed accounting firm, nothing I should say should be constitutes nor be relied upon as legal or takes into account your personal situation. So especially when it comes to this stuff, it really is a very unique sort of stuff. And the idea is that you will walk away finding your power, but you're still getting professional advice is always a good idea in this area. So let's just get on with it. Um, I think everyone here knows the rules have come previously. So by and large, our last after our first webinar had a few troublemakers. We haven't had that problem since. So don't need to say anything on that. So really the main aim of today is just to get into this whole idea, knowing your rights. One of the ways that I am observing myself that whatever's going on is controlling celebrities and people is through money and through what I call ties, attachments, and financial security. And it's very easy to get up and say, you know, I will stand my ground for what is right and I'm standing for my freedoms. But then suddenly when you realize that your job's at risk because you're told if you don't go and get um, jabbed or you don't go and wear masks or you don't do certain things that you're required to do it's amazing to see how quickly people start buckling and it's one of the reasons why um you know when someone's kids they can't feed their kids or they're you know suddenly got debts on their mortgages that they're not going to be able to pay if your celebrity was something to lose uh, i've i've watched with curiosity over the last year some very conscious celebrities who were speaking very boldly against everything suddenly changed their tune very quickly and no doubt someone probably talked to them about. And again, they had something to lose. So I personally believe that this topic is all, it's, it's, they say, say the best till last. And, you know, no doubt that last week, what we shared about very important, this, everything's important, but, but the issue around money in the Western world and having this area of your life secure and having this one sorted out is just so important. And I'm sure everyone would agree. Just, if you agree, just give me a why. My sense is that most of you would be would realize that this is an area that it's critical to have this area right in your you know yeah now people here are wide awake to this area so very quick and very easy to you know give up your power so yeah so anyway the great reset the great depression and how they've happened for centuries. So, and what lies ahead. So this is really designed to empower people to step up and get through these very troubled times. And in saying that, if you actually know how to navigate these times, you could end up actually coming out of this financially miles better off than before, because depressions um, turn into wealth trans, um, transfers or whatever else. Joe says she's going to another workshop in two hours. That's okay, Joe. It will be finished before then. You know, the reason I've started early than I did previously is because I've got to be off myself at seven o'clock Perth time, nine o'clock Eastern Standard time, because I have a workshop with Raymond Grace on energy reading and energy shifting, which we're doing, who's my master mentor on the spiritual clearing energy and shifting things over cities. So I'm very excited and very keen to do that one. So... 
Okay, so revision just quickly to cover what we've done to date. And if you haven't seen any of these, just go back and watch the replays. If you want to see the replays, you will find them on our YouTube channel for The Awakening Within. So, you know, The Awakening Within. So we went through the legal system. And this one, it's interesting because I've been getting calls from people with political parties and everything. You've been quite fascinated with what I run. And yeah, at least two people involved in running political parties want to speak to me. So no doubt that this topic that I've done seems to hit a bit of an important nerve in the community. So people realise that not knowing this kind of stuff is the reason that we're in a bit of a bit of a hole right now in society because people are just going like oh yikes i don't even understand how our economic and political system works and most people have no idea how our money system works and that's why you see so much silly stuff on the internet and people coming out with just plain stupid stuff that is more catering to people's fantasies as i would call it you know like about their love and light fantasies so Generally, it's very important that if you're going to stand for your rights and stand for what is true, you're doing it from a correct foundation. One of my favorite boxers or sportsmen is a man called Floyd Mayweather. I don't know if you've heard of him, but Mayweather is a boxer who's never lost a major fight, like 50 something fights and never lost and done very well for himself financially. And Mayweather's secret is he just doesn't get hit or like knocked out. He He's a boring fighter. He gets booed regularly because he's a very cautious fighter. His defense is impregnable and he just doesn't get beaten because he doesn't get knocked out and he gradually wears his opponent down. So I always liked him. He just doesn't get hit, knocked out. In other words, he's not a reckless fighter. He, he knows that it's better off to kind of just keep winning. And that's one of the things I like about him. And to get to ultimately win this war that we're in spiritually, politically for our freedoms, You've got to have that patience to be able to just absorb the, the unimportant hits and make sure you protect yourself from the big hit that's going to knock you out. So financially is definitely one of those big knockout blows that could hit you and just knock you out cold. So I, I like to pick like Floyd Mayweather when I'm doing this. In other words, it's more about you've got to get some hits and that's life, but you just don't want to get knocked out. So this is what we went through, the foundation, the constitution. We went through how our government works. And I think many people were really um, like blown away how, how it all works and realizing that things are kind of absolutely all over the place and all that stuff, judiciary, parliament, executive and stuff like that. So can jobs be made mandatory? Um, that's the other thing we looked at. Um, so that was another one. So that's that one there. Um, can jabs be made mandatory in the Commonwealth or states? So we went through that one in depth and we looked into deep things and just exactly how Section 109 really worked, realized how much misinformation there actually is on the internet around this area. And just talked about my view is that the Commonwealth can't do it, but the states can. And that's why, and I, and that's why I've been predicting all along um, that the way to do this is that the Commonwealth would never make it mandatory. I've said from day one they wouldn't do it. I've said from day one I don't even think the states will by and large force it. But you can coerce people if you give businesses options to do it, because for liability reasons, if nothing else, many big companies will enforce it. That was been my prediction all along. That makes this war slightly difficult to win. Um, in the short term, simply because governments can just throw their hands up and say, we're giving you a choice. And technically that is true, even though in practice, they're extorting people through finances. And this is why I believe that this topic today is so, so, so important. I believe many people who otherwise would stand their ground for what they believe in their freedoms will give them up for finance because they just money-wise can't make it work. They would depend on Centrelink, they depend on a job, they depend on some government stuff, things like that. So you, without having your financial shit together, you leave yourself so vulnerable. You literally will, will end up losing this war just because you will be starved to death. Um, ancient conquerors like the Persians, the Babylonians and the others, that's how they took society, um, cities. They would siege them by, by surrounding them with armies and just wait. That's all they would do. They wouldn't go and attack straight away. They would wait 
And they knew it eventually the people would run out of food and they'd start to starve and then they would give themselves up anyway. So this is a really important topic today. And I hope people are seeing this, that this is a day when you want to be really, really on top of your money. Um, we went into a state of emergency and the fact that forget all the not nonsense on the internet, we are in one and that gives governments a lot of rights to do a lot of things. And that's why I showed that getting this undone is going to be difficult. Um, I went through and explained mandates versus legislation, like about masks and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm just seeing questions coming throughout recordings and other, maybe the moderators, Grace and others can just answer that and help people out here. Thanks guys. Mandates and legislation. Um, yep. So legislation comes from parliament, mandates come from government. And that's um, very important to read your mandates I mentioned on anything that's coming out. So just have a read what the mandate actually says. Um, we went into, is there an overarching human right to stop this? And we went into this whole thing about order of creation and how that works. Public servant, not public master. Um, and the fact that we really are at war. Then last week we went into the history of civilization collapses and why we are by and large, we went into why we're heading into one, which I think most people have worked out. The history of collapses, the proof on the peasants revolt and how it was really a big disaster. And on both protests, they really don't make much difference. And I went through why. Um, went through Lady Gulliver, who did make a difference, riding naked, who was a high-profile people, and, and suggested maybe some naked jaunt through Sydney or Melbourne, which I'm not sure if anyone's taken me up on that. We went into the history of um, spiritual awakenings. Um, we went into why it will get much worse before it gets better, and why it will go on for longer than people think, but why the outcome will be much better than people think. And I finally mentioned why we're heading for the greatest awakening in modern history. And from there, I went ahead and we concluded, and I had a lot of great feedback from that webinar. People were saying it blew their mind and made people realize that we have to have a spiritual awakening, but we also have to have a political, and if either is missing, you've got a problem. Great spiritual awakenings about political change usually peter out within five to 10 years. Great political awakenings without spiritual generally get overcome in the end and worn down. So you've got to have the two together. Now we're going to go into the great reset and what that's involved. So any questions from anyone before we start on that one? Okay, looks like by and large everyone's ready to go. Okay, so yeah, people keep asking about the recordings. Um, just YouTube channel, The Awakening Within. Okay, so um, on questions, please don't send questions about issues before the webinar has finished. They won't get answered. Um, they have to uh, uh, relate to the flow of the webinar in the moment or else at question time, please ask whatever questions that you want. So just be very clear on that one. Um, on, the, on the ones that were done previously, on the mandates and legislation, all I'll say on that one is watch the previous one, but the main difference is that mandates are not done by parliament. Parliament passed laws, mandates is just like the cabinet, like Scott Morrison and others, or the state premiers getting up and just making some like mass directions or mass mandates. So that's what those stuff are. That's what a, a mandate is not actually passed in parliament by the elected representatives. It's just a few government dictators making their decision. So that's why you really mandates, it really should only be procedural just to implement legislation. So state of emergency passed by parliament gives the executive open, open slather to pass any mandates they want. So that's what I shared was the problem. Okay, so my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And this, I think, summarizes just about everything um, about what's going on in our civilization, is that people have forgotten the higher law and are paying the price for it. They really are. We are paying the price for our ignorance in society. And I've always said to people, ignorance is like the law of gravity. The law of gravity, ignorance of it doesn't save you, 
if, as my cousin found out when he was five and he jumped off a roof holding an umbrella because he'd watched Mary Poppins and landed awkwardly and hurt his leg, um, found out that that didn't work. Um, likewise, in the same way, the fact that you're ignorant and you believe you're doing the right thing doesn't save you from the consequences. So what I'm going to teach you today, if at the end of it, you'll probably be a bit overwhelmed and think this is actually really hard to sort. And the answer is, yeah, it is hard to sort. But it's a lot harder to sort if in, say, two years' time, you don't have money coming in and you've got governments telling you that unless you do certain things or carry your phones around and do certain checking or comply with certain injections or get a microchip inserted into your body or whatever else they make up, that's hard. You know, that's when you're really in trouble. Right now, there's still time to sort yourself out. The, pl the things are still playing out. So this is the time when, when it's still possible even though it's harder than it was, say, two years ago, to take the hard, radical steps to get your financial stuff sorted out. So hopefully some of you here are ready to do that. Who here is willing to help and make some hard decisions and do what you have to do? That's my question. Okay, so a few people saying yep. Just remember that at the end of the webinar, you know? Remember that at the end. So take the hard decisions this is the thing so a starting quote from dr adrian rogers that pretty much summarizes what happens that causes a society to collapse it's when you, when one group of people get the idea they don't have to work and that the government or people that do have money will provide for them now, the extreme example of that is America right now. Like America is exactly that right now. America, a large group now, there's been a 700% increase in the Socialist Party, give you an idea that actually believe that now and will openly say that they believe it's the job of the wealthy and the others who benefited at their expense to take care of them so they can live their purpose and live their dreams and let the government and people provide them. You know, people who basically say, you know, I, I'm living my purpose and my dream and then taking Centrelink the next day, I'm not, and it, it, you're really living in a dream world. You know, you really are. And you're better off just to be real. Right now, I'm depending on Centrelink that, and, and I'm not living my dream and purpose. And that hurts. And I want to do, do something about it. That's the kind of mentality you're going to have to part of this webinar with if you're going to get through what's to come, is taking a realistic assessment where you're at and realizing that what one person receives without working for or giving another way of putting that is giving back fair exchange or doing some kind of work in society or community to get back, whether it's an, in, in a really, you know, a job that you enjoy, whether it's running a business, whether it's in some kind of spiritual um, humanitarian work that you're giving back and getting looked after, we're, we're made to work and, and contribute to the world that we live in. And that's the thing to realize here. And when half the people believe that's not the case, you know that the end of nation civilization is ending. And we went through all that last week, how time and time again, why that happens. Sovereign Individual, written in 1995 by Rees Moggs and Davidson. Heavy read, a brilliant book on the transition into the information age from the old industrial age. So they foretold the next 40 to 50 years ahead and confirmed that the Roman Empire starts repeating itself. It said that they, they, they spelt out what happened with Rome, which I went through last week. They talked about increase in information, about high tax countries reducing their taxes, cryptocurrencies. And the big thing they said was big global national governments would collapse. And the big thing I said that's going to come out of this whole thing is you will see rural and regional and smaller communities and governments come out of this whole thing and more sovereign individuals and communities. but. Big governments don't collapse easily. They will fight to the end to hold on to their place. So you're seeing this now. You're seeing governments who know that they don't have the money to keep doing what they're doing, and, and no one wants to give up their office to do the right thing. So they just increase taxes, they keep bringing in laws, they're doing whatever it takes to try and desperately hold on to power. That's what you're dealing with right now. So... No doubt they predicted that, that the time would come when governments would just literally grab people's money without any, you know, without any conscience. 
Whereas generally to now, you see that happening in a process, but the time will come, they'll just do it. Because once they realize that they just don't have the money and his problems, they'll just start grabbing people's money. And they said, and they'll just turn into crime gangs. And you're already seeing signs of this in America. And rest assured, you will see, you're seeing that happening already, Carly saying. Yeah, so it's happening already. No doubt we're heading for these times. And Rome collapsed. So, and we haven't learned from history. We just haven't learned. You know, we just continue to, you know, wander along and kind of think the whole thing will eventually work out and come good. But yeah, we don't learn from history with socialism. Like, and if you if you don't know what socialism means, go and have a look at the dictionary definition. I'll give you a bit of a hand to get started with. But if you go, for example, and you do a, you know, I'll uh, have a look at, say, we'll use the font of all knowledge, Dr. Google. Um, basically, it indicates that government, by and large, or community, controls the wealth. So not so much businesses, where it's contrasted with capitalism. So say Biden is a socialist, by and large, and say Trump is a capitalist. A capitalist believes that private owners, not the state, should regulate things. So socialists are more about government should control things. Capitalists say more business owners and people should have the right to build business and then leave it to the people to give back to help those who are less fortunate and build the infrastructure, build the roads and build the stuff. Now, the only thing I will mention here is that capitalism breaks down itself when, when people start getting caught up with personal profit. And that's what's happened in recent years. Celebrities would rather use their money to go and buy jets and five cars or whatever. And again, there's nothing wrong if you've got a lot of money with living well, but there's been a, there's been a lot of what I call or perception of accumulation of wealth rather than a lot of giving back. And then, of course, the people start crying out to socialism, thinking that will solve it, but it doesn't. A better solution is for people to become rich as capitalists, but learn responsibility to give back and help people quite considerably. So that's the idea of, of it all. So we don't learn from history. If you study Karl Marx's um, Communist Manifesto, you'll see for yourself that the abolition of private property, in fact, US meet all of these ones, Australia meet nine of them. So by and large, this was Marx's um, little philosophy. A little bit of interesting stuff about Marx himself, the, the father of communism and socialism. Marx himself lived in abject poverty most of his life. Three of his kids died because they couldn't eat properly. And Marx spent his whole life blaming the, the upper class and people for his poverty. And on principle, he refused to work because he believed that working was making yourself a slave to rich, big, big corporations. And he believed he was a classic socialist, believed that others looked after him. So that's the guy who who basically found the socialism. He lived broke pretty much his whole life until finally, as he got a lot older, someone funded his movement. I think Morgan or one of his people. So, and you're seeing this happen today in America too. We give up our power very easily in the West, you know, very, very easily. So the US government has printed like one, you know, $1.9 trillion. And they've been doing this and will print miles more. Meanwhile, global debt is soaring, like really, really soaring up um, because our whole money system is working on the basis that governments just print money like they print it um, on a printing press. They don't have it backed by gold or anything else, not since 1971 when Nixon removed the gold standard. So that's a simple way of understanding our monetary system. So by and large, when the government prints money, most millennials and most people go, oh, okay, we're just printing money. That's cool, you know? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But what's actually really happening is they're just diluting the value of everyone else. Now, what you've got to actually understand is that right now, as we speak in America, inflation is going nuts. And that's because as, as Biden is printing money hand over fist, people are going like, yikes, and they're putting their prices up to compensate for the dilution of their money. And of course, meanwhile, what happens there? Um, people start increasing their money and keeps going up, keeps going up and keeps going up. And bang, people just basically lose their, um, you know, 
Yeah, so I've been basically people's money. This is what happens and why things collapse. And the rich start leaving and eventually everyone starts leaving. Just so you know, what my experience is the matrix of how this goes something like this. You know, the very, very, very educated have already moved and started to take action about this whole thing. You know, they're already going like, we are in full. So what do they do? So they do something along this kind of line. I'm just going to bring this up for you. Um, I'm just going to write something up here. So I've kind of done a very broad, very overall um, breaking up into um, into this, something like this. So let me just um, bring this up now. I'll just put up a slide to help everyone. So the elites have already taken action around their money, okay? They've already been, you know, taking action around their money and they're long gone. Last year, before COVID happened in 2020 in March, in January, a record number of CEOs resigned and sold shares on the quiet across all the major US public companies. So did they know about it? Yes, their elite friends who'd already taken steps were telling them. And so their cronies were being aware about it, you know, what I call. So then you got the, what you call the super aware, remote viewers, the psychics, there's like seven different categories. They were taking action too. So these are the people who are super aware. They knew this was coming. And I even had an email in the community I was in of, of, of remote viewers and others in June 2019 saying that there was a pandemic that was going to hit the world and warning all people in remote viewing communities to move into the regional areas and move into a quiet area because major cities would be in lockdown. Now, I saw that in June 2019, and I must admit, I thought that sounds a little bit interesting, but I'd be, I knew some stuff was coming from my own research and my own spiritual insight and downloads I tend to get. The super wealthy also work it out, even though they don't get told by the elite or their cronies, they just work it out. They do analytics, they go through, I've got a client who's none of these three really, but he's just gone through, worked out the history of money, he's an educated guy, and he was putting his money aside in Switzerland and Austria and various other places over the last five years and was well and truly ready for this thing. I was teaching about this with um, a guy called Stephen Pettit back in 2015. I was teaching this in the Hyatt back in 2007. So basically there's a people like us, um, you know, whichever category we're in. Then you got the standard rich. That's what's the people who have got a bit of money, but start to realize as the shit hits the fan, we've got a real problem and start moving. And last year, and probably late 2019, last year, this year, they've been moving. You know, they're the people who kind of sat in their laurels, enjoyed their wealth a little bit too much in the last decade, but then were smart enough, wise enough and humble enough to move quickly once they saw it. So most of these categories have already taken action in, in this area. Um, most have taken action. Most of these people in this category have taken some kind of action. You know, but those in this category here may not have taken as much as they like and would still be working and still be very anxious but they have moved. Then you've got what's called the middle class and everyone else. Um, these people are the ones who are the masses and the bulk and who end up being caught in the system and in the collapse as happened in every civilization collapse and wake up one day and realize they didn't take enough action. And it pretty much is universal and I highly doubt it will change this time again. And the only question is whether you're willing, if you're, which means if you haven't taken action, you're in this category right now. And the only category is, are you willing to take the radical steps to move very quickly into at least thinking like this? Even if you're not super rich or super wealthy, you can change your thinking and start educating and start taking radical action really fast. And the radical action can be to do anything, you know, like um, it can be as simple as learning to simplify your life, learning how to live on a much lower amount of money for the time being, cutting down your expenses, so that, you know, while you're sorting your crap out, you're ready for it, whatever it happens to be. So that's that's the matrix of how it works. So the the elite who've already sold their shares, moved their money, most of it, you know, bought up rural farmland, 
They bought up in the regional, put their money in cash across various banks, bought some gold in various places or some various assets, continued to invest as normal, and just by and large kept on doing and going ahead. So Venezuela, a very rich, wealthy country, this was then by 2018, an absolute mess, you know? And this was all the middle class. The middle class and the most, I don't know if any of you have noticed it, but many of the dumbest people with this whole situation are the wealthy middle class because most of them think their university education carries them. And they're usually the ones arguing online on the um, Facebook groups and others and attacking people for basically having a different view on the science or whatever else, because they've been taught to trust science, taught to do whatever the government tells. They got their degree and got their licenses and their businesses by just playing ball with, with the system. So these are the people who are kind of the trolls of everyone else for now, but are usually the ones who end up getting caught here quite badly as a, as a crypto bank. And they wake up and realize their retirement savings have been taken by the government, as has been suggested, as has happened in most of these times. That's the first thing that tends to get taken. Robert Kiyosaki predicts that the, the pension funds will be one of the first things to fall um, in the great meltdown and the great seas. And I have been saying that as well. I have no doubt that will be the case. And the Great Reset has been saying that's their plan as well. So it's all in the open. And it's just a question of whether you're going to take any action on it. So society has been collapsing for a while. And I was teaching this back in 2005. I was showing these figures. Um, these are the predicted figures. Um, before 2008, you know, these figures were very similar. So... Generally, around right now, it's down to about three to one. So it's the rich are fleeing because they can see this stuff. They, they've learned stuff. They've educated this stuff. Something like this webinar would bore them shitless because they've already read all this stuff. They've gone to webinars. They've paid money to go to secret offshore seminars. They've done like what I did back in 2015 and flown to Hong Kong or to Singapore. They've done seminars in this area. They've learned about the situation financially. And they've just moved their ass and, you know, been taking action. So they've got a plan B. They think like insurance. I don't plan to crash my car, but I've got car insurance in case I do. So they are hoping that their country they live in will stand up and not go through and not be part of the new world order. But in case they do, they have their plan Bs ready. So they just know the realities of life and they're ready to handle it. And they have their defense mechanisms ready. And it's one of the reasons why we're doing our special event on the sovereign individual, you know, which we're doing in, um, which we're doing waking up next, which I'll share about more at the end, but I encourage everyone to come, which we're doing at a very affordable cost, a two day event in person in Perth, and also will be live streamed for those interstate or overseas. So this is where we'll be going for the two days and really teaching everything you need to get this. And especially learning about, you know, what the elite know about frequency medicine, what they know about, um, you know, looking after their health, which they do, what they know about looking after their wealth, where to store it, all that kind of stuff. Because really, it's not going to be a crash course for people to kind of catch up pretty fast. Because if you haven't taken a lot of action, you've got a long way to catch up. So you, you want to be at that event if you haven't taken those steps. And no doubt, you know, yes, it will be recorded, Irina. So if, there's no, if you sign up and pay for it, yep, you, you can have access to the live streams. So all this created um, fear of losing assets. Um, and hence, now we move on to this thing called the Great Reset that everyone hears about. So what do we mean by this thing? So it was first announced there where Mr. Klaus Schwab got up and said, hey, everyone, I think that we've got an economic problem. We think that, we think that we've got the answer. Um, and we think we should just reset the whole economy and reset capitalism and bring equality. And let's get a nice new global order and let's all work together as a world community. Now, my comment I want to say on this whole globalist world community, I was talking to a close friend today about this, and I said, it's the most unworkable concept you can ever meet. And I said, I'll tell you why. I said, long before any of this happened, I said, there's one thing to live peaceful coexistence with other people. But, and I, I, know, I know, for example, a lady who years ago, who I was dating, and it was just horrendous while we dated. But since we stopped dating, we've become friends and we get on really well. But would I then go and date her and move in with her again? No, no way in heck, you know, absolute terrible. You know, this particular one, not that we ever moved in, but we were dating quite seriously at one stage. And yeah, 
But I've learned to be in peaceful coexistence with her, but we just didn't work in that region. Likewise, I have a peaceful coexistence of people who live in, say, Turkmenistan or Afghanistan. Do I want to go live there or have them live with me? No, I certainly do not. Um, I just don't. Do I want to live in China and have a social credit system or have them bring it in here? No, I don't. You know, the reality of the world is there's different cultures, different tribes, different people, and we have different ways of being and different lifestyles. You know, it's like, you, you, it's like, for example, I might be a great catch for one girl, but I might be a terrible catch for another girl because it, depending on what you're looking for and what you're desiring to find in your life. And so the whole idea of a global order is always destined to fail. It's just not going to work. And so this whole idea of reset capitalism and get everyone working together, it's one thing to be in peaceful coexistence, to just accept the fact that Europe runs things a certain way. If you want to visit the Philippines, you're going to do things a certain way. That's, that's, that's just learning to have mutual respect for people's rules and countries' rules. It doesn't mean that you just give up all your power to them. And I think this is half the problem that we're getting and that the world is going to start to realise from all of this. Because this great reset is bringing in foreign values, for example, into Australia. And I know most people here are Australians trying to bring stuff into our country, which just doesn't, isn't who we are. You know, it's just not like Australia has never been the kind of country where people like, by and large, what people love about Australia is the ability to freely speak out, freely protest and things like that, which right now is a myth. It's not happening anymore. And that's because we've given up so much of our freedom to a globalist agenda. Now, to understanding this kind of stuff, the whole great reset concept, by and large, suggesting that we all come into some kind of world financial economic system. This is why it's so important to learn what is it going to take to not be part of his system and make sure I, I learn to grow and develop sovereign wealth. So the reality is, though, this is a little fact for you. On average, every 90 years in the current system that we've got, they have to reset the system to avoid hyperinflation like in America. Because as soon as you just start printing money, it works for a while because generally at the start, it's done carefully and very cautiously. But as the system starts to blow out and people start leveraging to get gains through cryptos and trading and everything else, um, and people love it, eventually, then, government, then more and more people start, you know, printing money and see it and, and then start giving away money and start printing it out and giving it away here. And then before you know it, more and more people are doing all the work or, or doing they, or wanting the money, less of doing the work. People start wanting to live on speculation rather than go work in an orchard or work at a farm. Um, because they just want to have an easy life. And then what happens is that the government start printing money, like we've got JobKeeper, we've got this. And the wealthy go shit, and they start pulling their money out, and others start doing the same. And eventually people wake up like they're doing in the US and start putting up their prices, and the thing starts to blow out, and they've got to reset, get rid of debts, and start again. Now, the Money Masters, I would recommend that you watch this video here. Um, if you haven't, it's a three-and-a-half-hour free video. Um, I'll say it again. People are asking questions on specific matters on this particular stuff. I'm going to keep presenting. There will be questions and answers. It has to, unless it relates absolutely to the flow of the webinar, I'm not going to answer the questions. And, I will, and you're going to have to keep them and make sure you ask them again later on because they will get lost in the chat, just so everyone knows that. So otherwise, they will get lost in the chat. So um, the Money Masters video is, like I said, a, a three and a half hour free video which explains it. I strongly recommend you educate yourself in this if you have or haven't already. Is there anyone here who has watched this before? Yeah, quite a few. Um, it's very easy to find um, for those who are asking the link. There's a, web, there's a, there's a, group, there's a website called Google, who some of you may have heard. Um, so Money Masters documentary, and you will find it here. So when you click on this one here, um, bang, and that's it there. So it's a great, 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 great learning. And if you haven't watched it already, um, it's some of it's stuff towards the end. I'm not too sure about, but it gives you a really good out, you know, outline. There's many good stuff, but educate yourself around the system. So, just, so this is what our Schwab said. This is a reset on capitalism. And here's the well, here's what they're saying. You'll own nothing but be happy. So the financial reset that they're proposing is that the elites and their big technocrat friends will own everything 
and you will own nothing and then they will do everything for you to make your life easy so you can in other words live in a system where you don't have to work you can just get things given to you very easily but provided you play ball with the system in terms of how it works um just to give you an idea of how this system works right now in china i was reading today about a guy a journalist who speaks out a lot about them and one day he went to get a plane ticket and couldn't anymore then he couldn't buy this then he couldn't buy his train tickets and he can't even go to restaurants so social credit systems mean they can do that kind of stuff so that's already implemented in china right now you know they do that kind of stuff um us are now starting to do that as well to some degree and australia is showing signs too so hence financial sovereignty i'll say it again Pauline Hansen and Malcolm Roberts have tried to speak out against it without much success. Um, this is what the World Economic Forum say that they will do. Um, they will, um, you know, basically this is what they're saying that they will do. The three different things. Um, but what that means in plain English, and when you read the rest of their papers and, and forum sites, they're recommending increasing more taxes, especially wealth taxes, to stop people getting wealth for inheritance, bringing in more laws to control and regulate things, put more money, dip into retirement savings. Yep, they said all this. Um, governments to own more businesses and companies. So in other words, to take over companies. I personally predict in some countries, I'll just take people's properties as well. Um, greater control and tracking, they've suggested. Vaccinations, they've suggested to keep the public health in order and removing of cash in favor of digital currency. And Nancy Pelosi, in recent times suggested to bring in a digital US dollar. So yeah, this is the kind of stuff that they're talking about. Now, I think we would agree this shows more than ever how important it is to be sovereign. Now, what exactly do I mean by sovereign? It's the quality or state, you know, of a governing body to govern itself without any interference from outside bodies. So that's the basic definition of so of um of sovereignty it means you can control everything so yeah it's really good so basically this is what the sovereign individual is all about and what the seminars that we'll be doing is aimed to do it's aimed to help people become completely sovereign and ultimately you take control of governing yourself so true sovereignty means you govern yourself in your finances and you govern in your health and not rely on someone else. So in simple terms, if you're not taking the radical steps to basically protect yourself and keep governments far from your wealth, you and your family's future, and we're not hiding it anymore. And as we shared last week, we are at the end of a civilization. Now, the good thing is a new and better one will come out of it, but there will be many casually, casualties sorry, within this whole thing. So there will be more and more casualties that will happen out of this. Generally, every major civilization change in the Industrial Revolution, in the Great Depression, what happens is that the people who are prepared end up coming out of it a lot wealthier and more empowered as you move into a new world, that will eventually be a better world, a more sovereign world, a more a more smaller world, a more broken up world. But the people who don't adapt to the change and take the action will be badly caught out. So you want to make sure you're not one of them. So in terms of has this happened before, it most certainly has. Um, at the time of the ancient Hebrews in the Bible, they were doing this. And it was called a year of Jubilee. And every 50 years, they'd cancel debts and start again. And it was designed to flush out the debts and clean up the economy. So all debts were reset, loans are forgiven, and the economy basically was given a brand new currency and was giving a brand fresh new start. So it was designed to give a fresh start, especially the poor, fix everything up. Now, when done responsibly and done properly and done fairly for everyone, a reset can be a fantastic result to an over bloated economy that is in a lot of problems you know so that's the um that's the reality but so a reset works beautifully fix that kind of problem and give everyone a fresh start 
So it lets everyone refresh, refresh, rest, reflect, stop people working long hours to pay debts and survive. Like, in fact, in recent times, they're far more common than people realise. Um, in fact, they've been a common feature of Western and world economies for, for like decades, hundreds of years, even thousands of years they've been around. So especially when you have the fractional reserve printing system that we're in right now where they can print money has been around a long time. It first came around in Babylon back in about two and a half, three thousand years ago under Hammurabi's law. The Persians use it, Sparta, Rome, um, the Rothschilds brought it back in the Middle Ages. So these, these systems have been around for quite some time to basically do this. So a very good example was in the 1290s with King Edward, where he did a big reset, but because it was done fairly and responsibly, you know, um, what would actually happen is, um, you know, it would usher in the Renaissance or whatever else. So Renaissance was an amazing time. So basically what happened is that in the late 1290s, Edward did this, you know, got the bankers, um, looked after him or whatever else, um, cleaned out the banking system, freed it up, and within 10 years, England people were working a lot, lot less than before and a lot, lot shorter hours and churches, cathedrals were built and art was done and things really transformed. So on average, a reset happens every 90 years in Western economies. So that's, as I mentioned before, so that's what we've got going on here. Um, it's really, really good when you realize that kind of stuff. So, so right now we're due for a financial system reset. Um, okay, so that's what we're in right now. So an economic system, just to give you an idea here, um, 1930-odd, there was a currency reset around 1933. Um, gold standard was removed by US President Nixon. Um, and dollar pegging currency reset. So great reset, I believe, will happen sometime between 2021. Very unlikely this year. I believe it'll be more likely around 23 or 24 or even 25. But so 1971, 1930, we can kind of see how a, like every 40 to 45 years we've seen that. So um, the Great Reset, you will see all this kind of stuff. And I believe personally, they'll just bring a whole new financial system that will dwarf everything that you're seeing right now. Like the cryptos, everything, a lot of that will be taken out. That's my opinion. I've spoken to a lot of high level money experts. That's what most of them are preparing for. What's quite interesting. So what lies ahead from here? Um, no question we've got some kind of economic meltdown is inevitable and unavoidable. Um, it can only go down in a major way in the years ahead. Yes, there'll be temporary big booms of cryptos and some stock market like accelerations up, but we're definitely heading for it at some stage. You know, we're moving into that. So we're witnessing the collapse of a great civilization right now. We're seeing civil liberties and freedoms being diminished. Um, morals and ethics almost non-existent, and more and more tracking happening, <laughs> strong coercion for medical treatment, storing of currency, stocks and commodities in a melt-up, followed by a meltdown, and who knows what they're going to do next. I mean, some are talking about this. <coughs> the Bible talks about in Revelation about this thing called the mark of the beast or this great thing here. So no doubt we're heading for some fairly know perilous times in this sense so and those who think gosh this is pretty heavy keep in mind that the biosecurity thing we're seeing now they put laws in place and generally governments don't put laws in place for fun you know they put laws in place because they're planning to use them so one example was in 2009 they changed the laws on pandemics and the definition of a pandemic until 2009, pandemic was a very, you have to have a lot of deaths, like a high percentage. They got rid of that in 2009, because technically this whole situation is definitely not a pandemic on the original 
definition. But the biosecurity legislation meant that the state governments and the Commonwealth can just pass any laws that they want, or as soon as they pass a state of emergency or biosecurity threat, that this gives the power to the chief health officer. So this was all prepared and it was used. So the bank bailing laws are setting us up, I believe, for the next stage over the next three to four years in Australia. And wealthy clients who I've got are very aware of that and they're moving fast. In the next, like, you know, two to three years, we're setting up for that. Um, US, to give you an example, in 2009, US bailed out Lehman Brothers by printing a record amount of money and effectively wiping out all, you know, a huge percentage of the US um, population's money and people didn't even realize they did it. So in Australia, on the 14th of February, with only a few senators pr um, present, um, they passed this legislation for bank bail-in. Um, ramifications for Aussies were massive. It's a long, complicated legislation that brings Australia into line with the bail-in agenda of the Bank of International Settlements as agreed at the G20. So it basically means it kind of gives Australia over to the power of the bankers uh, once and for all. So bail-in is about government not bailing out distressed institutions as we saw in the GFC um, using taxpayers' money. So what it's doing is using creditors of the bank to bail itself out. In other words, the banks who are printing money and are making profits out of you, when they get in the financial trouble, just take your money for their own um, bad management and get themselves out of it. So it's basically a wealth transfer mechanism to prepare for the Great Reset, to move money away from the citizens and move it into the hands of the bank of the International Monetary Fund, which regulates banking systems across the world. So it effectively means that Africa can secretly step in and run distressed banks and confiscate and write off certain types of bonds and securities and confiscate cash savings. So thing is now, that's the kind of like the bad news. Understand that with this happening, those who are prepared, the opportunity is incredible, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, what's going to come out of this? Like there's a lot of opportunity right now. So it's very, very exciting. So there's going to be plenty of it. You're going to have more community-based local regional areas to prosper, like big states or big corporations are going to break down. We're seeing more of this kind of stuff here. Um, people are becoming more financially responsible and less entitled. Just whatever you do, don't bury your head in the sand. It's my ultimate thing. Think like the squirrel at these times. Um, squirrels are, are smart. They gather their nuts preparing for the winter. They know that the only thing sure is that summer turns into spring, or sorry, the autumn. Autumn turns into winter, but winter eventually turns into spring again. I believe right now we're in a fairly late autumn, heading into a winter. That's where I see the world at at the moment. So squirrels know we're heading into a winter. They don't fight it. They just gather nuts and make sure that they've got plenty of food to get them through the winter, and they hide away. Bears go and, and hide away. Birds migrate up north or south, wherever they tend to do. Um, animals do that because animals know seasons and feel changes. I think humans, unfortunately, don't do that as well as animals. So it's a really, really good time right now to read the, the things and gather your nuts and prepare for winter. And it's a good time to be doing that, not to fight it, realize it's coming, which means, you know, minimizing expenses, learning to um, get back to what's important, crisis management stuff, things like that. To make absolutely sure that you will be able to survive what's ahead. So very important that you can survive and you get through what's coming up. So what is the solution? How do you store nuts? What do you do? What are some of the things? Obviously, like I said, this is a big topic. You know, this is something that there's a good reason we're doing a two-day event, not this weekend coming up, but the one after, because we're getting so much questions on this. So there's only so much you can do but I'm going to give you a bit of an overview today of some of the kind of things you're doing. And obviously saying, if you want to understand more, either you've got to research it yourself or um, and look into it yourself or come along to our event next weekend. So the big thing right now, but I'm noticing with the elite and the super wealthy and clients I work with is they're taking a very safety first approach. In other words, you're not trying to be heroes right now. Um, 
there's a time and a place to invest, grow up big, kind of enjoy life. But I remember a high net worth client and friend of mine said to this, he said, when, when you're in a boom, everybody is a, everyone is basically a millionaire. Everyone knows the answers. Everyone in the last crypto boom was a crypto millionaire or thought they were going, about to be one. He said, people start to live recklessly. They start to spend their money. They start to think they can travel and do this and do whatever they want. He said, recession, sort out the men from the boys or the you know, girls from the women or whatever else you want to put it. In other words, the mature ones. The mature ones, he said, and the ones that survive it are the ones who lean up, you know, trim their expenses, trim their affairs down, and they get back to basics and what's important and simplify their affairs. I remember my first major big business, I went broke because I had so much money coming in, but I just increased overheads and in the end got in all kinds of trouble got left licking my wounds, learnt my lesson and minimised things down. And now in business, I've learnt to live a very lean model, very efficient business model, very well organised business financial model. And even when a lot of money comes in, I don't just suddenly go and increase expenses. I just invest. I just simplify things even more. So nobody wants to be the wealthiest man or woman in a prison. I think we would all agree on that. Um, when your life and safety is at risk, which starts happening in many socialist societies. And I don't like it when I see anarchy happen in cities. That's something that then once anarchy hits and anger hits and people start going violent, they get out of control as the French Revolution and Peasants' Revolt happened. You know, and that's what starts happening when people get into economic strife. You know, they start doing crazy stuff. We've all seen the toilet paper runs, you know, and food, and places where suddenly food is, is, is getting shorter when it's supply, that kind of stuff starts happening. Um, Venezuela, they've got major food shortages. Um, this is what happened in the Great Depression once the system and the collapse started happening. This was the banks, people lining up, but they couldn't get in there. I don't have any doubt we'll be seeing that kind of stuff happening in the near future in banks in parts of, of America and possibly Australia, you know, if we don't act. So, in terms of how do you protect your wealth from what's ahead, what can you do? I emphasize again my original disclaimer that I, I'm not going to give financial advice. I'm not allowed to give it, not, but I can educate and just share some general concepts. One of the first concepts I'll share before we get started is that no one knows exactly, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, you might be... But, when you go, let's say, for example, that you invest, you put your money in the National Australia Bank. Now, most people would say that's safe. And the, and the truth is it probably is very safe. But um, banks do collapse. They do. Um, you might say, well, I put my money in gold. And I have people say to me, gold is always the answer. Well, in, 19, in America in 1933, President Roosevelt issued an order Wanted to give up their gold, and anyone who didn't give up their gold would go to jail for 10 years. So, if Australia suddenly make an order seizing all the gold and saying you'll go to jail and you will be locked away from your family, what are you going to do? You know, um, and if you've had it registered at the mint, so gold, yes, is good, but gold, there's always a chance that could happen. Then people say, What about bonds? Well, bonds can collapse, you know, and so nothing is safe, but some things are safer than others. And the idea is that the, the, the wealthy do what's called a modeling portfolio. So this is a Harry Brown model portfolio, the original one and the more recent one. So the point is you're covering all bases. So you have 20% in what's called pure storage. This is just gold, maybe silver, like a Bitcoin or something, if you think that's uh, you know, a safe store of value. You have, you have some stocks like international and various companies, bonds, which are, you know, income yielding things with the good government, cash across various banks worldwide, and private investments or cryptos that are what's called more speculative cryptos rather than mainstream coins. So the thing is, what this does is let's say governments do seize gold um, and bonds go through the roof, you'll be okay. Let's just say that you know, that cash gets cancelled, but gold gets left alone, you're going to be okay. If you've got a private investment and one happens to work, that can be okay. The chances that you're going to be okay is much higher if you've got a balanced careful. 
This, by the way, is exactly what high net worth people do. This is pretty standard. They do not exactly this. This is just giving you a model or guide without telling you exactly. But I'm sure you get the idea. So, for example, when crypto shot up earlier this year, I remember looking at it in April, May, and I realized that my crypto had gone up so much, they were way out of balance in connection with the rest of my portfolio. Now, of course, the temptation was to hold it in there, thinking it will keep going, but I just said, no, it doesn't actually, you know, mean it anymore. So then I moved, um, I sold some and moved them into other assets, and I'm glad that I did. Um, so I saw someone mention property. Property is another one you can put in there. Many of the super wealthy don't include property in their portfolio just because it's the easiest asset for governments to seize. Although in saying that, if you're going to do property, that could just end up coming in. Um, you might end up a bit less in stocks, a bit less here, a bit less in here, and then you might have a 20 or 30% in property. So that's, another, that's why I'm saying the whole idea is to model it out. You may even add properties another component and have six, you know, 16.7% in each one. The whole idea is to create model portfolio. That's the whole idea. The other thing that's been taught in, in, in the sovereignty um, that, we, that I, I was taught by my mentors and which we teach our high net worth clients and our Global Wealth Club mastermind groups is basically to build V6, what's called flags or six um, foundations. And each of these in themselves is a huge webinar in themselves. But basically, cash flow, having a way to produce cash flow, and I'm sure some people right now who are in jobs where you're concerned that you could, you know, or Centrelink get that taken away with the medical procedures that they're talking about, to have some kind of cash flow independently from that. I'm very glad that, and I'll admit, I, three years ago, I was seriously questioning if I'd made the right choices with my life. This is me being very honest. I had taken a very cautious and very over-the-top, you know, approach, assuming the world would turn to shit, and I started to think maybe I'd got it wrong. Now, of course, I'm glad, but I was very, very big on setting myself up to be sovereign because I didn't trust governments one little bit. I didn't, tr I didn't want to trust anyone with my financial security. So to always be able to trust myself and ultimately even if financial stuff, you know, goes that, um, you end up, you know, basically broke. And what's interesting, my experience is, and one of the things we teach people, I remember te we, my 17-year-old, my we were running a youth investment program recently for young people. And they catch this better than adults. Because what I taught my son from young is start saving money no matter where you're at. So if you're not making much money, always put some money aside to save. So my son's been saving money since he was 12 years old, but, but well, my, you know, my, my, and my twins. Not surprisingly now, one of my 17 year olds runs all the businesses now. He's now got a lot of money. He's built up cash, invested in crypto, he's got some money in various other things as well, invested in an oil company, but he started small. So the, the, the number one thing to do is if you're not saving at all, then start saving, you know, even if it's like 5% of your income. Because if you're not going to start saving now, you're never going to do it. So that's one of the things that I tell people. So you find a way to produce cash flow and start at least saving something in terms of what's coming in and putting some money aside. I have a close friend who I told this to, and she was hardly earning anything. And she's only saving like 20 bucks or 30 bucks a week, but kept doing it consistently. And now she's got quite a bit of money like a number of years later. So starting the process, things tend to start working. I'm investing privacy. This for me is a big one. I've got a huge thousand year legacy now for my, that I'm planning to build and leave for the planet to do with a spiritual awakening center and um, education center on economics, especially passionate to train up kids and teenagers in finances and wealth. As I see it, most adults tend to not really listen, but kids do. Kids, once you show them the way, tend to take action and they tend to do it. So I'm really keen to help the next generation. The tax residency, having structures set up in your home country to protect wealth and if possible, even offshore structures and offshore tax residency as well. And if you're really at that next level, you might want to be looking at a second citizenship or passport. So many Australians are now wishing that they had one right now, I'm sure, with what's going on in the world. So. All this kind of stuff, 
many are going duck, like for example, using DuckDuckGo rather than Google is one example. There's so many others. And like I said, each of these topics are quite major. Um, people starting to set up like, you know, encrypted phones in, using encrypted apps. Um, and I, I, I always teach people privacy. I like to keep things very street smart and simple. I just say, look, you know, whether I'm wearing undies or not is none of people's business. You know, the reason I'm private about that is it's not really people's business. Not, not because I'm trying to hide anything, just not my bit, not people's business. So equally, what's going on in my personal affairs and finances, if there's a lawful government order, yeah, I'll tell them. But otherwise, I'm not going to volunteer anything to anyone, but they don't need to know. So it's just, that's, so that's the basic of how I see privacy. It's just you decide, you know, who um, gets your stuff, so to speak, you know. So what the wealthy are doing, and keep in mind, these are just things they are doing. I'm not saying go and do these. These are some of the things they're doing. They definitely have precious metals like gold or silver or platinum as part of their portfolio. They're definitely having some kind of crypto, I'm finding as a rule. Not, they're not as big on cryptos as I'm finding a lot of the, you know, everyday people. Like a lot of people say cryptos will solve the world's problem. I find the really rich aren't thinking like that at all. They do have cryptos. They're covering it in case in case, you know, it does become the way of the future. Many of their private opinion is they have their reservations because the technology of cryptos right now is very, you know, um, limited um, in terms of, um, yep, but in terms of what it can do. They think there's going to be much better ones. But in saying that, in case they're wrong, and I do, I myself have money in various cryptos. So I, 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 I do that myself. I use it. I'm not as caught up as everyone else tends to be, but I still use it quite heavily and I did pretty well out of it. I, I generally look at cryptos very carefully before I go into that. A safe haven of some kind, like that's why many of them buy rural land or have connections where they can go. Um, jewelry is a common one in some parts of the world because when governments seize gold, they tend not to seal jewelry, seize jewelry as much. So getting expensive rings or jewelry is becoming more common. Art in some parts of the world, wine collections. Um, they're some of the examples of what they do. Obviously, cash they put money into, as I've mentioned, and bonds. They put money into shares. The main thing is educating yourself. Like, I don't use financial advisors uh, myself. Even when I was still learning finances, I just worked a lot of it out myself. And then I, I went to people who knew what they were doing and educated myself on wealth and finances. And that's really what I tell people, no matter where you're at. If you're already pretty advanced, great. You know, take action to really show up your wealth even more and get into making even more money and getting into even better opportunities. That's my suggestion. I personally like dealing with people who've already taken action only because I find they get what I'm saying and people who are action takers in their life tend to, you give them some wisdom and they'll really act on it. Generally, people who spent their life making bad choices rarely change just from hearing a webinar like this. But every now and again, it's always great when someone proves me wrong. And that's just me. As you know, I'm pretty blunt. I'm a realist. If you haven't taken action much to date, the odds are against you, you know, getting yourself out of the hole. You're going to have to take some pretty radical action and take a very humble approach and realize that you need help. And I remember years ago when I realized I needed help. I humbled myself quickly. I was fortunate enough to come along with a mentor who was very blunt with me and I humbled myself. And he actually said to me, the way you're living your life, mate, you're going to end up broke and, you know, empty. And I actually said to him, I agree with you. So I said, what do you need for me to change? So I invested in his program. This was years ago and he, it was, wasn't cheap. And he was very hard on me. He Set me goal. We set goals together. If I didn't meet them, I got I got my ear chewed off. But that that was a turning point for me. So one of the starting points is that if you're already taking action, take a lot more. If you're not, realize the chances that you'll suddenly change your patterns is not high, and you're going to need to get a triple ass kicking compared to anybody else. So that's just my comment. Um, it's like a healthy person who's in good shape tends to be able to get healthier very easy by improving it. Somebody who um, tends to be very sick and unhealthy from bad eating and bad habits, it's going to take a lot more work to get back to good health. So that's the point. 
So this is just some interesting stats for you. Um, in the Sydney Morning Herald article, virtually none of the elite pay taxes at all is what they found. And what they found was it was all completely legal and they all spent a crap load of money on financial advisors. So how, or on tax advisors, sorry, who really knew what they were doing. So the point is the wealthy know the importance of getting the best experts. And I always tell people, Roger Federer, the tennis player, I'm sure if he and his coach played a game of tennis, he'd absolutely whack his coach's ass. I'm sure if Novak Djokovic took his coach on, he'd win 6 nil, 6 nil. So then some may say, well, why does he have a coach? He has a coach because he needs someone to see his blind spots and keep him accountable. I would regard myself as pretty self-aware. I have a, we have a business coach. Um, once a week, we have a meeting with him. I have um, a financial mentor who I keep, keep talking to from time to time. I have a spiritual mentor who I work with. And the truth is, I know more than my mentor on a lot of things, and they know that. But they keep me accountable and see things about myself that I don't. So that's another thing I would mention about what the people that are sovereign I know, I've, I've met. They all have mentors. They know they need them, and they invest heavily in getting mentors. So, and especially if you are having financial challenges, as I did years ago, that's even the more important time to invest in mentor. Now, to be clear, I'm not, I'm not doing this as a prop to get you to buy for me. The truth is, for many of you, I couldn't help you anyway. The point is, you've got to, you've got to have to be willing to invest in yourself, in your education, and in mentorship with someone, okay? And there are going to be people out there who will be at your level, who can assist you at a very basic level to get started, and someone that you can give back to, and then they can give back to you. So... And if you've got money, to be not afraid to invest money with really good tax advisors and people like that. So tax residency, a lot of people have been going to Panama, especially lately because Panama had the best residency system in the world. They've just tightened up now. But you still, Panama, Costa Rica, Thailand, Bali, there's many places you can go to get a tax residency. Um, so that, that enables people to pay minimal taxes. Um, for example, Panama is tax-free. Bali, if you know what you're doing, and if you structure around there in Malaysia, you can pay very minimal taxes. Same with Costa Rica. Malta is 5 to 15%. So this is what a lot of people do. Um, setting up companies, setting up trusts is another one um, to minimize taxes. Trusts and companies, if you're making decent money, you'll, you'll save a lot more tax in Australia than you would in your own name. The other big thing of a company and trust I'll mention as well, as what happened to one of my clients recently, was I had a high net worth, I had a client come to me who, or two clients come to me in the last um, two months, okay? Both of them had high tax debts to the ATO in business. The first one had a company, so I just told them the good news is we can do an insolvency restructuring for your company and we can wipe out your whole tax debt legally without you getting in the trouble. It cost him about $25,000 or 20 grand, 20 to 25 grand, and he got rid of nearly, you know, 100 grand tax debt. Bang, just gone. And so, as I'm sure you would agree, if you could invest 25 grand to get 100, you'd do it. Um, another person came to me, he also had a tax debt, but it was all in their own name. They had never bothered to set up a company. I said, I can't help you. We can't do that. You're going to have to, you know, pay the debt or go and see a bankruptcy or insolvency individual specialist. So structures is the wealthy secret, protecting their wealth from governments and from everything else. So offshore companies as well, as you start to grow your wealth in Australia, um, even regardless of tax benefits, whether you get it or not, many wealthy people are just sending up overseas to protect wealth in case Australia does the same thing with money as they've done with their citizens flying in and out. I have no doubt there's a good chance they may do that where they may start to limit people moving money offshore as they start to, if they start to get into financial challenges or getting towards a reset. So many, um, if the bank system collapses over here um, because of the bail-in system, then yeah, you know, many people are having money sitting offshore in Hong Kong dollars or US dollars or Swiss francs or euros, balancing them all out. So Hong offshore companies. Um, Hong Kong, Singapore, many others, full of the best banking in the world. Offshore trusts like Cook Islands, Seychelles, um, are very popular as well for asset protection. 
Um, these are just examples for you. Um, someone's asking about super funds. I'm not a big fan of them myself. Number one, I'm not licensed to advise on them anyway, but number two, I'm nervous of retirement funds. I say um, they do give good tax benefits. I have my reservations myself. I just say to people they're best to see their accountant. Super funds is definitely one way you can also, you know, invest your money if you're a bit older. Um, setting up a self-managed fund um, because you can get some lower tax rates. The tax concessions have already been slightly reduced um, by the Turnbull government a few years ago. So like I said, I have my reservations on them. I don't really go, don't teach on them as much anymore. I tend to say to people, if you're doing that kind of area, um, yeah, that's something you best to see your accountant on. I have my reservations about super just because of the great reset discussing about retirement funds. I think they're the easiest picking and the trillions of dollars in pension and super funds, as Kiyosaki says, are highly at risk. So I generally myself, it's not something I'm big on myself. Um, and what I normally do, if I work with clients who've got super, I normally work closely with them and their accountants and then their accountant can look after that, but I just give my guidance and then the accountant tends to implement and give all the superannuation advice and things like that. Foundations is a big one. I'm a big fan of them. The Rockefellers, the Clintons, Buffett, Gates, Bezos, they all use fees because foundations are tax-free and you'll find that the more money you make, the more you want to give back anyway. And foundations are a great way to give back and minimize taxes. Many of you know I run a spiritual awakening movement. I do, in fact, probably more of that now than anything else. Um, it's my big life passion. So I set up a religious um, foundation to set up my own religion and spiritual work. We do a heap of giving back to the world in that area. We do, this is a kind of, these webinars you're hearing this, this is all part of our religious foundation that we're giving back to the world and teaching spiritual stuff and legal stuff. Um, and they're tax free um, for money that comes into them and they have a lot of asset protection benefits as well. So more and more you find as you go on the path of wealth and doing all that, you start to get a love for foundations. And I find many of my clients, once they've worked with me for a while, usually within two or three years, they're doing something of this kind, just because it's great. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that I'm doing that. And a lot of what I'm building now is gonna be owned through foundations and it's not really my money anymore. You know, I'm learning to truly live the, asset protection principles of controlling, not owning, and being able to give back to the world en masse. Because that's, I mean, we all would agree that once you pass on from this world, the only thing that matters is what difference you made. And if you spent your whole time, you know, building up cars and living your own for yourself, I've always, I've always had this knowing that somehow it wouldn't go quite so well in the afterlife, whatever that would mean, whether it means coming back to earth for another round or just having some more things to sort out. So there's all these kind of places, offshore foundations, Australian, US foundations. Um, wealth protection is so important, as I mentioned right now. These are my seven things, which you can take a picture of or whatever. But the, the less you own and the more you control, uh, that means that if someone wants to sue you or government wants to take your money, but you don't own a lot, you're someone that becomes less able to be controlled. If you're a celebrity earning millions of dollars and you get told your movies will be cut off and the government will freeze your funds because you said something to upset the woke movement, well, yeah, not fun. So use structures to own wealth. I say be a penniless bum, own nothing in your own name. Make sure you've got multiple structures, get some advice on your structures. You, you never want to have your business in the same structure as your, as your, say, investments, like your properties, your cash, your gold. You want to have them separate. Um... As you start to develop more money, you want to have an offshore strategy. Cannot emphasize that enough. That's why I bolded it. Um, regular reviews and good mentoring and have the right team. I mean, that's just, yeah, it goes without saying. You show me someone who's a bit of a skin flint or a stingy person and tries to cut costs on mentoring, having the right team, I'll show you someone who will end up with a huge tax problem down the track or somebody who will end up with major economic, you know, financial problems, so to speak. So um, this is the time to take charge of your money and secure your future. Um, just one thing before I go through this summary, um, keep in mind that a lot of the technical questions on trust companies and all that, um, I'll be covering a lot of that in the Sovereign Individual Weekend in two, in the weekend up the next. 
I do have a website called, um, I'll just take you to a, show you a couple of our sites. Um, for example, if you go to our WealthSafe, which is one of my um, our sites, you will see there's some stuff on companies and trusts and how they work, asset protection, um, a little bit about tax minimization and offshore here. So by all means, please go to our site and do that. I've also got some free webinars, resources, webinars on this site as well for those who really want to go and do some extra work. So you've got some tax protection, you've got Australian tax minimization, asset protections, our companies and trusts, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, we've got some free trainings in here as well. Um, a lot of what, a lot of um, the free trainings though is what we're covering tonight, so I wouldn't bother so much here. But that WealthSafe one should help you quite significantly. So that's just, um, on that one, so in summary, take a brutal worst case scenario look um, at what and where you're at. What are the flaws? Is it where you really want to go? Are you happy where your family living? So yeah, this is the time to take a really tough action um, plan. Look at yourself viciously. Like how much trouble are you in right now? And I still do that now. How much trouble are you in? Um, are you really living the life that you want to be living right now? So get some advice from someone, okay? Someone, you know, um, get your advice from someone and staying educated. That's why we set up our Global Wealth Club, by the way, just to educate people and keep them updated. But find out somehow, get some updating, you know, join a program that resonates with you. Um, do some work on this. Um, get, I, I'm a big lover of community right now. I, I've been a hermit for years. I'm going and having coffees with people all the time and having fun with friends and just learning stuff like this because community is so important. I like talking to smart, switched on people and make sure I'm ahead of the game. Okay, questions. Now, please start typing your questions. Um, before you, while you're doing that, I'll mention about the live event coming up, um, the Sovereign Individual. So, this is um, our event where, um, yeah, this is the one that's coming up. So please, by all means, um, this one's going to be, like I said, week, in, week up next. I deliberately set this up to be very clear at a very minimal cost for what people are getting. We're not really doing it to make a lot of money. I just wanted to cover costs and make sure people who are doing all the work get paid something out of it, like Jasmine's doing amazing work to organize everything for me. Um, We've got like, you know, about three or four people are going to be working their asses off to do that. And I want to make sure people get looked after. Um, so that's just to be clear why we're charging for that event. Um, because we just want to make sure that, you know, and we're doing an actual room. We're going to be providing some food for people who are, you know, coming along to the thing to make, to really spoil people and, you know, look after people. Um, that's, it's on City Awakening here. Um, on the 30th of July. So this is the um, event. So yeah, it's just all written down here. There's a much less cost for the live stream than if you come obviously in person. So yeah, that's just about the event um, and things like that. So the question, someone asked about debt with property. Um, I can't really, I'll, I'll just give you my personal opinion on that one. Everyone's got to be true to themselves. I don't like debt, okay? I'm naturally a free spirit. I don't like the idea of having a lot of debt, especially at this time. Um, some would disagree with me and that's fine. I just don't like it. I'm a big believer right now that when we're moving in the, but when you're in a boom period, yeah, that's a good time to, you know, rack up some debt and take advantage of the growth. Not so good an idea when you're in a time like we're heading towards a crisis. So that's my opinion. And I stress that is all my opinion. Someone's asked about a financial advisor, got any suggestions? No, I don't. Um, so 5G solutions, not really the purpose of this, but there's various technologies like Blue Shield and various others. I use Blue Shield myself. Alice, are uh, precious metals and crypto safe in SMSF um, or cash? Well, the Bail-In Act is only talking about banks and cashes. The SMSFs, I can't advise on that one. All I can do is read between the lines, Alice, on my general opinion. I don't like super because governments tend to, you know, once governments start going rogue, they can just grab things that they control pretty easily. That's an extreme scenario, but we're living in an extreme world. So that's my comment on that one. Um, so 
like I said, I don't like debt. Um, transferring your home into a structure debt free, um, that will cost you a crap load in stamp duty, um, Karina. And it's a good question. Another thing you can do, um, let me just um, show you, is you can do what's called a second mortgage. And before you go, oh, what's that? Um, it'll take a long time to explain that. So it's easier if I just jump back on this site. Asset protection, second mortgages, that explains it. So that's another option. So if you transfer a property into a trust, you'll be up for a crap load of stamp duty and things like that. Someone, how much time do we have? It seems like things are accelerating. Oh yeah, look, things are going at breakneck speed. Oh, I don't think, we, I think that, yeah. All I can say is it's moving fast. I would suggest that you move like as fast as you possibly can. At uh, what point do you recommend getting a citizen network? That's hard to answer, you know? I can't really answer that. Obviously, the more you've got, the easier it is to get one. Um, no, I don't have a super expert I direct people to. I used to, but he doesn't take clients anymore because he's too busy. Um, Cap, can we take out a super? This pandemic, I don't advise on super. Uh, Matt, do you have any thoughts on removing yourself from the immunization register with the vaccine passports? No, I don't, because that's not what we're talking about today. Um, I might, you know, see how we go at the event. Caroline, do you think it's safe to keep some cash in the bank? Is this what you mean by having some cash? Yeah, look, I look in the day, Caroline, as I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Australia might be the one country where banks are okay. I mean, we might be wrong. The Battle Act might never be done. So I definitely keep cash in Australian banks and offshore banks, you know? So I, the wealthy all do it. So I, I, and I also have some cash, you know, always a good idea to have a little bit of cash at home as well. So the idea is a balanced portfolio. Um, how do we take our sovereignty back? That's like asking how long is a piece of string? Um, Zena, how are we supposed to get, but it starts in your head. Um, any super questions I'm ignoring, just so you know, because um, I've already said that I can't advise on that. Um, where can we buy gold or silver in Queensland? Um, yeah, that's, there's a coin dealer there. We go through that in the Global Wealth Club for people who are that. But yeah, you can. There are coin dealers. There's the local mint. There's things like that. How likely is repeat of communism and mass genocide? I think it's um, history repeats itself. I'm sure it will happen in some parts of the world. What happens in hyperinflation? It just keeps, yeah, basically people have to give up certain privileges to get their debts waived. So. Alice, are we welcome to join the spiritual session you're doing next with Raymond? Absolutely. You go to the Awakening Within um, Transformational Group. I'll show you that one, Alice. Um, and um, yeah, let me just take you there and show you what to do. Because it's the, um, the Zoom link is actually on there. So if you go here, the Awakening Within Transformational Group is one group. Um, which has got listed this Raymond Grace one here. I'm pretty sure. Let me just double check. I hope it is. Yep, it's here. Um, or you can go, I'm pretty sure it's Nasty Awakening as well, if you're a member of that. So either of those two groups has got it. Um, I just want the one here. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, it's on either of those ones there. So that's there. Yeah, there's a direct a direct Zoom link in there to click on for when uh, when it's at nine o'clock Eastern State, seven o'clock your time in Perth. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Steve. So Yep. So folks, if you go you go into that on yep. Facebook and scroll down, you'll see there's a, a direct Zoom link there to click on. Yep, just so you know, people, there's a lot of questions. If the questions are asking a very specific advice, I'm ignoring them. So like, for example, should we put our properties in name foundation? That's just too specific. That's a very general, that's one option. And that's all I can answer in that one. So foundation is an option, for example. Um, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Jacob, it's all new to me. Well, you've got to start somewhere, you know? You just got to start somewhere. It's better to start somewhere than nothing. That's my comment on that one. 
So Tim, I'm struggling to identify ways to diversify my income or my employment. Yeah, look, Tom D. Martini made a great comment, Tim. He said, generally people who lack um, money lack creative ideas and have a blocked mindset. And that's pretty true. So he said, just let go and start to think and do what you really want to do. A lot of people are living, um, if you ask yourself, and this is what youth get really well. If, if you're a kid right now, very few people are, what, what, what's your dream? Oh, my dream is to have a mortgage, be married, have three kids and work in a, in a job working at Medicare. I mean, you just don't hear kids say that kind of stuff. So there's a very good movie called Mr. Deeds. I don't know if anyone's seen that one with Adam Sandler, but there's a wonderful scene at the end where he kind of challenges all these people and gets them thinking, what did you want to be when you were a kid? And when I was a kid, I wanted to be a, a man who did magic and I wanted to teach people and fix problems. That was it. So that's what I'm doing now. So I, I think a lot of people, you know, just do, you know, just do what you want to do by and large. Um, Jonathan, with the seminar, I'd like to get live stream. Can I listen to it on my own leisure? Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be recorded, Jonathan. I'm not live streaming it to Facebook. We're going to live stream it on Zoom and we're going to put a recording on a special website which people can get access to. Um, that's how we're going to do that. But we're keeping it off Facebook because otherwise I'll probably stop it straight away with the kind of stuff we're talking about. Um, any citizens both with no money, just start with what you've got and find a way to give back to the world and start making money. That's what I do there. So um, someone's asking about the census. Yeah, again, it doesn't really relate to this topic, but um, I'm, yeah, look, my approach of the census, so I won't say much about other than to say that, um, yeah, it's, I, I don't myself, I, I just haven't done it for years. I've never been asked to, and I haven't done it. And I've just done a, a mental hologram in my mind where I just don't see myself as being part of it. Most people get in life what they focus on. So if you keep focusing on something enough, so focusing means a negative, like I don't want to be locked down. You probably will be. I don't want to have to wear a mask. You probably will be because that's what the, what's called the overwhelming thought. So I just don't think about that. That's my approach. I'm sure there's some smart lawyer guy who can get up and give a really technical deep magic bullet. I don't have that magic bullet. I just generally assume I don't have to do it and have the attitude that if someone turns up and says I have to do it, I like or not, I'll probably just do it. But it just doesn't happen. And I when I and when I read the legislation or read what the census mandate is, I haven't even had the time to look at it lately. There's usually a loophole or exemption somewhere. So I always just say just read what the census actually says and who it relates to. So that's the thing, you know. Um, so, yep, okay. Jonathan, God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. It's great to have you on board too. Um, your sister did that. So, yeah, look, absolutely. Yeah, your sister Jazzy is, is awesome. We love her the bits. So, someone asked about jobs or career in the future. Yeah, look, um, Gosh, we'll be covering that a lot at the two-day event because, like I said, there's so much to physically um, cover um, today. But, yeah, look, I just think anything that you with a big corporation is at risk. That's my general comment I'll do to help everyone. You know, if you're in a big – if it, any big corporation, I think you're fine for liability things and insurance coverage are going to force – try and coerce the jab on people. So I think any large job is a, is a risk for the time being. I think that um, generally in any recessions or economic crashes, consultants are normally the ones most at risk, like high paid consultants in most fields. There's some exceptions. One of the reasons I was pretty secure doing spiritual work and doing tax and financial stuff, because tax and financial still is in demand from the high net worth. And um, spiritual food's very much in demand, for example, um, entertainment. People, especially depressions, want entertainment. The Great Depression pubs were overflowing. Um, spiritual churches were overflowing so yeah but generally consultants and um big corporation jobs they'll retrench on mass i mean if you had a job in an airline you'd be in real trouble right now so i just say use your common sense you know that's what i do just use your common sense and really look look at it and think what they're going to probably do you know so yeah so Buying silver, yep. 
Yeah, a lot about asking on the census. Yeah, look, I, I agree with you, by the way, everyone. I'm not a fan of the census because it's just by and large an overreach. And um, it's just, mind you, censuses have been going on for years and years and years and years and years. I mean, ever since I can remember they've been around. Um, I've just, but generally what tends to happen is that they um, turn up and they come to your house and um, there's normally some exemptions in there when you read it. And the first time I looked at it back in 2001, the, the, the first census I, did, I got out of, it was just because I met the exemption requirements at the time. I answered them. And then just since that time, it's just never come up for me. Just because in my mind, I moved on and don't expect to do it. And this is one of the things I'm talking about with Raymond Grace tonight. Um, he and our energy work and, and holographic thinking has been my big passion. I, most of the stuff, how I protected myself is through holographic thinking, just simply not seeing things as a reality for me. They're just not. So that's why we're doing that webinar tonight as well, because Raymond and I have been working and teaching people that. Someone asked, do you see some states of Australia be better to withstand the coming collapse than others? Well, like anything, it's a gamble, isn't it? I, my opinion is that, um, look, I live in WA. I think WA, Northern Territory, Tasmania seem to be more away from everything. And WA is very remote and isolated. So, and we're much bigger. And there's many more parts you can go to if you don't like being in the big city. So I, I, I prefer WA than I do just about anywhere else except maybe Northern Territory. Myself, that's just my personal opinion. Far North Queensland, I don't mind. They're just my personal opinion, but I might be wrong on all three of those. So um, a lot of people are thinking the same way. There's been record migration happening. So, yeah, gold... A nugget, coin, bullion. Look, each has their pros and cons. That's the rule there. So someone talked about census is addressed to the, re the residents. So you say, sorry, not addressed to me. Yeah, I get what you're saying on that one. Um, so, okay. So thank you everyone for this. So just the final thing I'll say, um, that's a live event. Um, if you do want some help or whatever else, um, all you got to do, if anyone is interested in talking further with us, you know, just like I said, feel free to, you know, walk in one of these free consults. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, we're fairly selective. So we get, we get you to complete a form to see if we really can help you. We don't want to waste your time or hours. So if you complete the form and we really feel we can't help you, we're honest with you. We normally set, but we normally direct you to some resources that will help you. So our, our aim is that anyone who comes to see us, we will, you know, we'll go away with an answer of some kind to help them. Not everyone we can help with a consult because we don't, if we see we can't really help you, we don't, we just are honest with you. But if you're someone that we can assist, then we go. So by all means, feel free to go back if you'd like to get some help. Um, I do want to really thank you everyone for listening. And we're going to be doing that next webinar shortly. And I am planning, like I said, you know, it seems these are really in demand. So I may continue doing webinars on Wednesday for the coming days. You know, I may do some more. Um, in fact, almost certainly I'll do one next week. Because especially with the event coming up on the weekend, I may just share a bit on the census or share a few things like that. So keep, keep tuned, everyone, for next Wednesday night, because very likely I will probably do one more of these next week as a bit of a Q&A bit of a follow-up, a bit of a summary of everything that we've done and possibly even cover some very specific topics. So thanks for coming along, everyone. I do appreciate um, all of you and very kind words. Um, have a wonderful night. And um, the last thing in terms of other sessions, just go to the YouTube um, channel. So the Awakening Within YouTube. If you go there, you will find all of our other um, recordings from our... Um, other time. So let me just show you where they are. Oops. Okay. So the YouTube channel, um, I'll just bring it up here. So yeah, if you go into our YouTube channel, um, you will find it basically there. So it is there. You just got to go in and find it and, it'll, and the videos will be there. Okay, everyone. So, um, 
Yeah, look, thank you very much, Caroline. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, everyone. Very kind of you all. And have a great day, and I'll see some of you at the Raymond Grace webinar.